This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Okay, so here's my setup. You can see it's set up like a distillation. I got the ethanol in there. I'm using 95% or whatever the azeotrope is. Uh, obviously, if you use pure ethanol, you'd probably get a better yield. Um, and it goes up just like a distillation. There's my copper. It's getting heated by the heat tape. I don't know if you can see that light right here. I'll put it right in the middle of this thing. Screen. You can see down that too. Oh, there you go. See that bright? Well, it's not very bright, but it's red right in the middle of this. I'll put it right in the middle of the screen. Now, here's my receiving flask, but it's not set up like a like regular receiving flask because on top is a uh, condenser, a water-cooled condenser, okay? Because this stuff coming out, gas is going to be hot as heck, right? So it comes out and it goes up into the thing, and now I have up on top, I have a valve. And that valve has a little tiny hole in it for the, you know, diameter for the gases to get through, so it gets trapped in there. It traps it into the uh, condenser and condenses condenses some of it out. You can see it's there. We go. You can see it's you know drip drip drip. At the top, like I said, it got the valve. It goes through that hose. The hose comes down here, and it goes into a bubbler. See there. Goes in and out. But when it goes in, it bub goes all the way down to that bottom there, to that tube. You can see the bu it bubbling, right? And I have 80-proof uh, vodka in there, okay? And you can put anything that you want in there, though. You can put pure ethanol. You can put whatever, you know what I mean? 100-proof, whatever. Um, you might probably even put water in there. Um, then it comes out of there, right? And you can see the top, the cap. There's no gases, okay? If there is gases... I kind of make it go slower, okay? When I'm boiling it over here, I'm, I got it just on a small, you know, simmer like boil. You know, the lowest boil you can put it at, I have it at. Um, because otherwise, this starts filling up. You know what I mean? It makes it past the first condenser. It makes it past the bubbler and starts getting into the head of the bubbler. Now, after that, it comes out of the hose and it goes through another valve, so it has some constriction there. It kind of keeps the gases in here so that they have time to go, in, you know, dissolve into the ethanol, you know, water, 80-proof uh, vodka there. Anyways, it goes through that valve and it goes into a Y. Right. Just like the first setup, it's got, it's, it's got a receiving flask, but it also has a condenser. This one it has two condensers. The first one's a Liebig, right, which is the tube in it the second one's a gram with a coil type in it you know what I mean so anything that does get past the first this first uh, condenser right and it gets past the bubbler right and it goes into this it still can, has to get con it'll get condensed with this it'll be so cold down by then that because all these things are on ice you know I have that in a nice bath I have that in a nice bath all my receivers and bubblers are in ice baths, and I pre-cold that in the freezer, that 80-proof vodka, you know what I mean? So anyways, it'll go drip back down into there. So far, I've done about 300 milliliters. I'm, I'm going to 400 total, uh, and I, only, I don't even have a milliliter in there yet, maybe a half a milliliter. So not much is getting past this, you know what I'm saying? Uh, anyways, it goes through the two condensers, and you'll see up on top it comes out with a hose. The hose comes down and goes into this uh, suck back trap, 
which is basically just empty and then you can see it comes out at the top and it comes into this and this is my bubbler another bubbler that has like a gallon of water in it you know what i mean and it has two things on top and, and that goes to the outside because hydrogen i'm making hydrogen i don't want to uh you know get the hydrogen exploding with my flames or anything like that or static spark whatever uh even though you're not making that much hydrogen, it does go straight up, you know what I mean? But I put the hose to outside just to make sure. Um, and basically, once this, once this gets going, it's, it's, once this gets going, I mean, it goes by itself. I mean, I'm just, once I have it set for that certain speed, you know what I mean? The, the bubbler's going right, it's bubbling not too much where it's, kicking the water off you know the vodka all over the place up here there's no smoke that i see or vapors you know what i mean getting past this uh this is is you know dripping at a you know a good drip okay, let me get a good you know what i mean uh it's not too overpowering you know what i mean but it's coming at a good rate that and that's what I, I now is that the proper way no actually when they the papers i've read man they blast it through there um but you need to get the temperature of the vapor up to 300 degrees and that's why i don't blast it through because i figure by the time it gets up into up into the steel head it's going to be about 100 degrees celsius right by the time it gets halfway through this tube it might be 300 degrees celsius at that point you know what i mean and then it has the whole rest half of the tube to uh you know actually react and make the acetic aldehyde but it's actually a nice easy reaction uh the copper oxide i'm heating it with that heat tape so I, once i get it up to full temperature i just leave it there there's no watching it there's no checking it I just let it go, you know what I mean? Once everything's, I, you know, I got to keep track of this because when this is empty, you'll have some suck back. You don't want your this getting sucked back, although even if it did get sucked back, it wouldn't matter because it's going straight up into here, right up into this hose, down this condenser, and into this first receiving flask. So it's not going back into the pot if you do have suck back, okay? That's why I didn't put a suck back on this one. But I did put a suck back on that one because I don't want that that first one there. I mean the last, you know, where it goes outside. Because I don't want that getting sucked back up <laughs> into my last receiving flask there. You know what I mean? So anyways, this works with methanol to make formaldehyde. Um, you know, same exact whatever. You might want to cool it down more since it's, uh, you know, formaldehyde's a gas you might want to cool things down more um but you would just uh if you want to make formalin you'd take the formaldehyde and this bubbler here you know this bubbler would be just pure water and then you would bubble the formaldehyde into it and you would make formalin they say it's actually easier and a better yield you doing making formaldehyde than it is making a set of aldehyde i don't know if that's true or not but i'm just saying that's what they say. I want to show you what it looks like underneath this tin foil. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, I just have the heat tape wrapped around and then I use some tin foil to kind of make it stay on there. You know what I mean? There's some copper. There's some see black carbon on there. It's basically all full up. You can see I made these thick so that they really hold it hold hold the tape heat tape. This heat tape was the same exact heat tape that Nerd Rage uses in one of his videos when he makes a uh, mantle, a heating mantle for the You can see there it is. It's all full up.
I just made that with activated carbon and I got some copper I made from copper sulfate. I put magnesium metal in and the magnesium went into the solution and the copper came out. And then I just mixed them. I put them in a bowl together and I stirred them up so that it was a mixture of copper and a mixture of uh, carbon. Then I just got some of this quartz, quartz glass wool, right? It's kind of like uh, insulation that you put into your house, that pink stuff. And I jammed that. onto the end of each, you know, I put some, see, you can see it here, I put some of that glass stuff in and then that way I can pour all the copper in without it falling out on the one side. And when I got done, I jammed some more glass wool into this side. And I want you to notice, because I made a big mistake, I bought this furnace tube, it has to be quartz to get these high temperatures that you want and not crack. Um, so I got fused quartz but I didn't get the ground glass joints at the end you see here. But I did get them slightly in between the, you know, in between the di diameter at the bottom and the diameter at the top, whatever's in the middle, that's what my pipe is that I got. So that I could slide it on there. Now what I did was I put some plumbing tape on this, okay, a little bit, just so it could be snug, and then I got my glass tube, and I rammed it over there, and s smashed it into the, you know, kind of screwed it on into the uh, Teflon tape, the plumber's tape, right, then, when I was done with that, I got more plumber's tape, and I taped it all the way around this, you can see, you know, I got it all the way from here, up to here, you know what I mean, in tape, and here's where the actual connection is. And works pretty good. Did the same thing to both sides, works pretty good. And I actually had a leak right here, right, on one of these, and I've done this, had this experiment going for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours several times trying to get it to work, and I've only had one leak. And I didn't stop anything, I just pushed the two things together, you know, the steel head and the furnace tube, I pushed them together a little bit, and then I just put some more tape, more uh, Teflon tape around it, you know what I mean, until the leak stopped. And that worked pretty good and it's worked, been working ever since. We got the bubbler that we have product in. And we have the first trap. First receiving class. You can see there isn't much in there that, this time. And I only have one big rex column. I'm just going to do one big rex column and get the stuff out of here, get the stuff out of here, and then I'll put them together. And when I distill that, I'll use two big rex columns. So I got it boiling and uh, it's already like 63 degrees or whatever. and it, there's nothing, I mean, it's coming over, don't get me wrong. But there's probably only about a mil, or less than a mil, probably. We did it real quick, so I didn't expect any acetaldehyde to condense out that quickly after going through such a hot furnace tube. It wasn't giving us, it's already at 69, and I don't even have a mil yet. So... This was a waste of time. If I ever do this again, I'm just going to take the first pot and just redump it back into the, you know, the reaction into the pot. So it can, because this is, it's a 72. I would show it on camera, but you can't really see. There's about a milliliter in there. Maybe it's about a milliliter. And it's already at 73 degrees to still hit. So this was a waste of time, but I just wanted to see how much was in here. You know what I mean? So we're going to move on to the bubbler, where hopefully there's a lot of stuff. And we'll see.